Hey book lovers, welcome back to 5 Minute Book Reviews. Glad that you could stop by for a couple minutes and uh, you know, give me a chance to uh, let you know about a good story. Today we're reviewing, finally, Soul, The Soul of an Octopus, A Surprising Exploration into the Wonder of Consciousness by Cy Montgomery, Atria Books, 2015. Uh, this uh, book has, uh, my copy has eight uh, color glossy photo uh, pages and a total of 261 pages has an index, um, has references. Uh, so this is, um, um, I, I always try to write these reviews uh, within a day or so of finishing the book because I want the material to be fresh in my head. I want to write stuff off the cuff. I'm not trying to make headlines here. I'm just trying to give an honest review of a book that I read and then my kind of gut impressions of the book. So The Soul of an Octopus, for me, it, it was a long read. I, I didn't intend it to take uh, you know, three, three weeks, I think, you know, to get through the book. Um, but you know, I, I started up my, I started up my net galley account again, so I could review, um, children's stories there. And I had a final that I had to take, um, you know, for some classes I'm working on and teaching and blah, blah. Anyhow, I got behind now here I am trying to sketch out my thoughts. Again, it was, it was a long read for me, and I, I didn't intend it to be. It's not that the stories aren't compelling or intriguing, but the truth is, truth be told, there's only so much natural history, which, to be sure and to be fair, is not the stated purpose of the book. Uh, but there's only so much of that one can do watching an animal, which is not in its natural environment. Most of the stories uh, in the book uh, take place at the New England Aquarium found in Boston, Massachusetts. Would love to go there. Would love to visit someday. There are also some excursions into the Pacific Northwest uh, to a different aquarium, to the French Polynesian island of uh, Mooreo, Mo, Mo uh, uh, forgive me for that, but uh, we also get to learn how to scuba dive with Montgomery. We learn about the people in her life, mostly people at the aquarium. Lots of good anecdotes in there. Um, here's the thing. I, I think it's an interesting book, um, but it's not a natural history. Again, not that it purport, purports to be a natural history, but I thought that the writing was engaging. It kept my interest level high, but it did leave a lot on the table for me. There's a lot of conversation in the book about religion, um, and I think this is the part that um, really just kind of stood out to me. Uh, the, the the information about octopuses, you know, was was great. It's wonderful. Um, fantastic. I'm, I'm certainly pleased that I read the book from that point of view. But let's think about some examples from the book about how religion kind of crept into the story that she was telling. All the octopuses in the story, they're <laughs> Athena, Kali, and Karma. I mean, that's that you can't hardly get much more religion than that. There's also Octavia, um, who is a pretty cool animal. There's discussions about the Buddha, the Buddha, I quote here, the Buddha denied the existence of persisting selves. At the end of life, the self may dissolve into eternity like a salt in the ocean. To some, this might seem distressing, but to lose the lonely self in an ocean of eternity could also be a release and enlightenment, as the mystics promise. Eh, I'm not so sure that that brings me any comfort, or I don't care about the kind of enlightenment that that brings, but whatever. Uh, there's a heavy layer of Darwinism as the foundation of the book. You know, there is in all these books. It doesn't really bother me, except that the Darwinism in these books, um, you know, is often spoken of in highly reverential terms. And, you know, Soul of an Octopus is simply no different. There's a mention, even mention of the Apostle Paul and his uh, out of, often uh, out of context idea of peace that passes understanding. There's talk about the Creator, the Creator's great ocean. There's a peculiar worship service in the last chapter, uh, again, here's a quote. The service is conducted in Tahitian, a language I don't understand, but I understand the power of worship and the importance of contemplating mystery, whether in a church or diving a coral reef. Uh, this is a, it, it's, it took place in a strange church. Again, here's a quote. There are no crucifixes or crosses in this church, only carvings of fish and boats, and this makes me feel free and forgiven. I, I, I don't know what that means. And then there's the facing the ocean in an eight-sided church, drenched in blessings, immersed in mystery. My natural response, even on an expedition in the name of science, is to pray. Yes, because science and religion are so often at odds. I pray for the success of our expedition. I pray 
I'll finally get to see more than just suckers under a rock. I pray for the souls of octopuses I've never known. Those who are alive and those who have died, but whom I will never forget. Well, one wiser than all of us, uh, Solomon, he wrote one time, who knows if the human spirit rises upward or the spirit of the animal goes down to the earth. I don't know. Sure, pray for animals. No harm, no foul. It's not a terrible book. I, I think some of this stuff is just weird to me. Um, I love animals, uh, but praying for animals is weird to me. But who knows? Maybe, apparently Solomon he was even a bit confused on the matter. Montgomery writes of her subject matter with enthusiasm, uh, you know, with elegance. I think the book is honest. She seems uh, like someone who is searching for something at times, and other times uh, she like uh, like she's found something. She she leaves a lot of open-ended questions. I don't think she tries to bring the hammer down and say, you know, this is definitively the answer. Uh, there's a lot of questions, at, you know, in the book, and, and, and I'm fine with that. She does write in a way, uh, I will say this, she does write in a way that makes the reader kind of really want to join in, though. I mean... Her descriptions of the wonders that she saw swimming in a coral reef, scuba diving in a coral reef, I wrote in the margin, makes me want to be there doing the same thing. And I have no desire to go scuba diving, but to be able to see all those animals and creatures she describes would be truly uh, magnificent. My, my one major beef is that I wish there had been a few more than eight pages of photos um, uh, uh, in the book. I'd like to have seen a little bit more of the aquarium and a little bit more of the the things that were going on, but that's, that's just a me thing. So I, I think at the end of the day, I, um, I, I just think that I need a little more than a philosophical point of view than the philosophical point of view where she comes from. You see, I, I feel like at the end of the day, I need a church with crosses. I need the apostle Paul in context. I need a self that does persist and I need to participate in a worship that encounters the holy and not just contemplates the mystery. There's enough mysteries. There are enough mysteries in the world. I don't need God to be one of them. So four out of five stars. Uh, join me. Come back next time. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Join me. Follow me on Goodreads. Next time I'm going to be redoing, reviewing Anne Lamott's latest Almost Everything Notes on Hope. You're this. I can't wait to talk about this book. Hey, thanks for stopping by, um, and I'll see you next time. Peace.